So more than 30 U.S. citizens are now home safe after evacuating Haiti on the first flight chartered by the State Department. They landed in Miami Sunday afternoon. Not clear how many Americans are still in Haiti at this point. The country continues to descend into chaos that's been fueled by gang violence there. And I'm going to talk about it North as Gary Pierre. Pierre joins us. Uh, Gary's a Pulitzer winning a founder of the Haitian Times. Welcome to the program. Um, let me start with this evacuation, and then I want to move deeper into the actual situation in Haiti. Um, that must be difficult logistically to even do, just to get to people to the airport, right? Well, yeah, absolutely. And I think what the latest news was that the U.S. Embassy was asking people to meet them in the northern city of Cape Haitian because it was very difficult and dangerous to uh, get them out of Port-au-Prince. Uh, which has been uh, the chaos that we're describing is happening largely in the capital and most important city in the country right now. Now, the state, one the, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. One of the things about you know us, the U.S. evacuating our citizens, there are uh, millions of people who are stuck there and they are getting terrorized and massacred. It's happening every day, and just as, just the same that you know I'm applauding that U.S. citizen coming home to safety. But there are millions of Haitians who are stuck in the situation, not of their own making. They had absolutely nothing to do with what happened politically, with the country falling apart. And yet, they are the victims. And so we must do something. Mm -hmm. The U.S. government must do something. The international community must do something to alleviate these people of this poverty, beyond poverty, of right. this uh, massacre that is going on right now. Yeah, they don't have the same option as the uh, U.S. citizens have to be evacuated in many cases. To that point, at the State Department, spokesperson there talking about how bad things are. Let's listen, then we'll come back and talk about what maybe can be done about it. Take a listen. It, it is not hyperbole to say that this is one of the most dire humanitarian situations in the world. Um, gang violence continues to make the security situation in Haiti untenable, and uh, it is a, a region that demands our attention and action. Is it getting enough attention and action? Uh, and if not, what would you like to see being done that's not being done right now? Well, first of all, Mr. Patel is correct. This is one of the worst humanitarian disasters of our time. And I know that there's a war in the Ukraine. I know there's a conflict in the Gaza, but Haiti is just as bad because here it's just one side. The innocent people are getting slaughtered. So yes, I agree with him. But where I disagree with him is that no, the international community is not doing enough. The White House, the State Department are not doing enough. First of all, Colin, Connell, I'm sorry. Correct. The Asian police are under arms embargo. Meanwhile, you have uh, arms flowing into the hands of the gangs. Right. So that, those issues need to be addressed right there. That, that would be a start. Then the Haitian police need uh, reinforcement. They need personnel uh, and, and, and material. And then intelligence, first and foremost, so that they can combat the gang. They can really uh, protect the people they are sworn to serve. Because I keep reading and stories or, or, or hearing accounts about how they're putting this like a transitional government in place or something akin to that. And I'm wondering, well, how could that possibly be happening if the if the gangs are the ones in control and what could break that cycle? So your, your point is you got to get the money to the police so you can calm things down before you can even talk about governing the country again. Exactly, because uh, the government is in name only. As you know, the prime minister is in uh, Puerto Rico. Right. He can't come back to Haiti. And, and so, sure, you, you, you organize an election, um, a government, a, a cabinet. So what? The gangs rule the streets. And by the way, when, when we say gangs, we're not talking about, you know, the gangs that we're in America. You know, these are criminals. It's not just sort of like uh, the, the Crips and the Bloods, for, for lack of a better example. Right, right, right. People who you see the, the, the weapons of war at their possession and attacking people. Yes, well-armed gangs fighting with military-grade weapons is your point. So that's exactly. that's how dangerous it is there. Let me make one final point, on the, uh, again, on the people, the humanitarian situation, um, which you've been highlighting. In your uh, publication, The Haitian Times, we'll put this up, there's a, there's a piece about the mental health crisis. And whether it's Haiti or whether it's anywhere else, sometimes we forget just about... Gaza, we should talk more about this as well. Just the, the unseen impact, as it says there, of gang violence and insecurity. Pick up on that as a final point, if you can, Gary. Well, you know, I, I got a call on Saturday from my niece, my last living relative living in Haiti, and she described this scene that really 
uh, as a hardened journalist, still softened me a bit because she's talking about how she's running from one neighborhood after another and, and, and running into gunfires. Her apartment building was under attack for no reasons, because there was allegedly some uh, the wife of a police officer living in the building, and they were just shooting incessantly. And that's really where we are right now. Yeah, something, I mean, I can I hear the emotion in your voice, your own family and something that you're covering. And boy, I can't even imagine that part of it, part of it but it's uh, something obviously that people will never forget and um, they need help soon. Gary, thank you for your, for your time in highlighting this. Gary Pierre Pierre, Haitian Times. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.